I'm Tina with Rebel Sensations and today we are going to be making six Valentine's Day decor crafts using Dollar Tree materials. I'm really looking forward to it and I hope you are, so keep watching! First we're going to be making some tea light votives and to do this you're going to need a glass vase for each votive that you'd like to make. I'm using two and you're also going to need Mod Podge some tea lights, and some table scatter or rock filler. I did not end up using this garland that I threw on the table. If you would like to use that, you could wrap it around the bottom, but I really didn't like the look, so I ended up using it for another craft. And then last but not least, some decorative and colored tissue paper of your choice. But we're just going to unfold and stack the tissue paper that we would like to be using and we're going to cut this square in half. Once you've cut it in half, you want to take these halves and put them directly on top of one another and then fold it so it's a little more manageable to work with. And starting on the open end, you want to cut off approximately inch wide strips or two centimeters, I would say. And you're just going to keep cutting these strips off until you have your last little inch segment which is your folded end and using this folded end you want to cut out a bunch of half heart shapes starting at the folded end so that once you've cut it out it makes a perfect little heart shape So once you've cut out all of your strips and your hearts, then you're going to take one of your vases and you're going to completely coat it with Mod Podge. You want the entire vase to be coated. Then you're just going to make sure that the spot that you're going to start at is still wet, maybe applying some more Mod Podge, and you're going to put down one of these strips. I did my strips vertically, but you could do them horizontally if you prefer. So just wet it under your strip, put your strip on, and you can smooth it out with your finger, and then put some more Mod Podge over top of your strip. And then you want to just continue this down the base. Once you've completely covered your vase, you can go ahead and cut off any straggling parts that you have on the top or the bottom and go ahead with your brush with the Mod Podge on it and just smooth it down so that it will rest evenly on the surface. I cut mine off instead of folding them under so that it wouldn't be uneven on the table and then you're just going to reapply Mod Podge in the spots where you want to add your hearts. So again Mod Podge, tissue paper, Mod Podge again. And just keep going until you're happy with your final look and then you can go ahead and set it down, wait for it to dry, and you'll want to do one to two more coats of Mod Podge over the top. I don't know what to say. Is it high? Is it hay? Okay, that's too bad. And remember while you're making this that it, the more layers of tissue paper you have, the less light that's going to shine through. Once both of your vases are dry, you are going to add your rock filler or table scatter like I am using and you're just going to add a little bit to the bottom of both of your votives so that it can hold up the tea light. And then we're just going to take our tea lights, pull up the wicks, and drop them in there. So here is what the finished product looks like during the day and at night with the candles lit. I think it's really beautiful and is adding just a lovely warm aesthetic to my house at night. I'm not sure that I'm right for this conversation. Half a smile, walk away. Again, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't really get these social cues. There's no excuse for lack of words. But I'm pretty self aware. But... Moving on to project number two, it is a super simple heart garland. 
to make this, all you need is some varying sizes and colors of heart doilies and some twine, rope, or thread to hang it on. So I just take my twine and I am making this twine the length of what I want my garland to be. And then I'm going to cut it off and put the rest aside. So to get started, I wanted to mark the center of the garland. So I put a white over a red since this is the focal point that I want you to be drawn to. I want more going on in the center. So then you just take your piece of twine and you're going to find the same hole on either side that goes through. So for this one, the holes needed to line up on both doilies so that it, the twine could go all the way through. And if you're having trouble pushing through the twine, you can just go ahead and burn your edges so that it will go through easier, kind of like an aglet on a shoelace. Since we didn't plan anything out or write anything down ahead of time, we are just going to add what we think looks best at the time. So as long as you add the same size and shape on both sides, it's going to create a cohesive pattern at the end. You can decide whether your rope's going over the center of these hearts or connecting on the side. Just make sure that you're stringing them through kind of the same way. And just listen to your inner art goddess on what comes next and keep going until you're happy with it and it's full of hearts. Once you've filled it all up, then you're just going to take the end piece, fold it over itself so that you're holding a big loop, and you're just going to tie this loop into a knot. This is just creates a super easy way to hang it up so you can have it on tacks or hooks or command hooks, whatever you have on your wall, without having to tie it up later. Here is what mine looks like and how easy it was to set it up. I think it has so much character and it was just so simple to make. Really brings it all together and sets the focal point of our decorations. You say that I should probably start to walk away. I'm hoping that you stop and make me have to stay. Cause I'm floating Next on to our third project, which is faux stained glass. You're going to need paint colors, your design printed out. I am using the Beauty and the Beast rose stained glass piece, some Sharpies, a paintbrush, a palette, and a picture frame of your choice. So just go ahead and take the glass out of your picture frame and put it over your printed design that you're going to be used. I taped mine down so that it wouldn't move during the tracing process. And then you're just going to take your Sharpie and trace all of the lines that you want. So it's really important to have the same line thickness and darkness during this process. So I went ahead and just traced the entirety of the design out and then made sure that the lines were cohesive on just a white piece of paper. So all that I could see was my line and the other lines weren't adding to it. Once you've traced out your entire design, you're going to get some paint and just add it inside the lines that you've created for yourself. So you have your one color and you're just going to fill in that area like you're coloring that one piece of glass. So I am just adding a light pink here on the parts of the rose that I think are the lightest and then I'm going to work up in color adding it to the blocks gradually. Lighter colors are thinner than darker colors so you will need more layers with lighter paints or shimmering paints if you want to be doing only one or two layers max with your paint I recommend using chalk paints their consistency is a lot more opaque 
after it dries than just regular acrylic paint. And since you're painting it on glass, it's very transparent. So I'm just adding all of my colors, layer by layer by layer. Some of them you really just have to do so many layers, never ending. And once I had all of my colors down, I just painted one color behind all of them because you're not going to be able to see the back of this so you just don't want any white spots or black spots or whatever your background color is shining through through the areas that you missed putting paint on. Just continue and fill in your outlines like a paint by number, filling that entire section with your one color. While you're doing this, you can stop and flip it at any time to see how much light is shining through. But remember, we're going to be putting it back into the picture frame, so light's not going to be shining directly through it. So you wouldn't need as many layers as you would if you wanted to do that. One eternity later. Now we're just putting it back into the picture frame and we get to see the finished product. This is so beautiful and I really think that the rose gold frame that I chose complements the design and the idea that it's a Valentine's Day decoration. You could do this with any design you want and I think it's just so elegant and classy. On to our fourth project which is a string art vase. You are going to need a hammer, a sign from Dollar Tree, some thin small nails, and some embroidery thread or thin rope, and some gesso, a paintbrush or paint. This is going to be for your background as well as a sanding block if your sign has glitter. So to start off, we are ripping off any 3D or extra stuff that is glued onto our sign that we'll add texture later. And we're going to cut off any tags or hanging devices on it. Then we're going to take our sanding block, if it has glitter, and sand off all of the glitter until we're left with a smooth surface. If you put your paint over your glitter, you will be able to see whatever writing or design was there since it's popping up in the paint. So sand it off to a smooth surface and then I am just painting my board with some gesso and once the gesso layer dries I went over it with some white fluid acrylic golden paint and painted the entirety of the sign until it was opaque. You can use any color of your choice here. And once your background is done, you want to take your piece of printer paper and you can use this to just kind of test out different sizes and shapes of your vase. Once you've decided on your design, you are going to go across and put nails about an inch or half an inch along your entire outline of your vase. So if you have a small corner or dip like I do, then you are going to need the, to place the nails closer together so you don't leave that detail. So you always want to nail on any points or corners and just imagine that you're going to connect the dots later, which you are. So you don't want to lose the shape of your design by having the nails in improper places. So I just took this board off camera and I put it with a piece of wood underneath it and I pounded in the nails on all of the dots that I set on our vase. Once all of your nails are in place, you're going to take a piece of embroidery thread and just tie it off on whichever nail you'd like to start with and then you're just going to zigzag all across between different nails and you can go around the edges of your nails by just going on one nail up to the second nail wrap around it and then up again 
and then wrap around it up again and you can do this following your entire line without any loose strings so it keeps it tight and applied to the nail that you're putting it on to keep the details of your design. You just keep filling it in, zigzagging across. Make sure you really have fun with it. This is the fun and kind of on edge part of the entire thing where if it doesn't catch on the nail right, it comes up. You just, as long as you're wrapping it around that nail head, it's not going to just pop off as easily. Once you're done with your vase, then you can just take some fake flowers and slide them through the gaps of your top holes and you're done. That's it, and this is how it came out. So cute and simple, and I've always wanted to create these string art pieces that I've seen. On to for our X and O sign, you are going to need a long thin sign from Dollar Tree. They have these for all seasons, whichever you have will work great, along with some paper towels and some paint of your choosing for the background colors. I only ended up using the black paint and I also took some of these wooden hearts that were from a DIY garland pack from Dollar Tree. I spray painted them pink. I am also using them in the next craft. And I really liked this metal crinkle heart on there, so I'm just going to be using another one of these as well. So to start off with your sign, again, just pull off any extra or 3D parts that you have. I just had this metal heart to pry off so I used my scissors to help me do that and if your sign has any glitter just go ahead and sand it off until you have a smooth surface. Then I am placing the board on the paper towels and I'm just going to paint the background color over it. I ended up really liking the way that this sign looked with just the black over it, so I decided to go with a two-sided sign. So I flipped it over and I am just painting the entire back of this sign black. So once your background color is opaque, then you are just going to print and cut out your X's, preferably on cardstock so that they're not going to crinkle while you're gluing them down. Originally I had wanted to draw out the X's and paint them white, but just to save time and make it easier, I am using this little PDF that I've created that will be linked down in the description box. So. Then you're just going to place glue all over your X and glue it down starting at the top and then you can glue your pink heart just below that. You want to be leaving a couple centimeters, maybe an inch of a spacer gap so that it doesn't look too crowded on your sign. And then you can just go ahead and continue gluing on your other X and your other heart. Once you've got your bases all down, then we're just going to take our crinkle cut metal hearts and we're going to glue them on top of our pink heart cutouts. This is how mine turned out. I really love the black and pink look. It's drawing the rest of the colors into my house with the Valentine's Day colors and it just looks so pretty and cute and if I saw this sign at Walmart I would definitely buy it so I'm even happier to be able to create it on here and share it with all of you. Last but not least, for project number six, we are going to be making a heart garland. To make this, you are going to need a circle kind of wicker thing from Dollar Tree. This is in the wreath section. We're also going to be using these two little garlands that are in the Valentine's Day section along with these candy heart stickers and this little wooden cutout garland DIY pack. You're also going to need various colors of printer paper or construction paper, whichever you have on hand, and fishing line. 
Starting off with our little wicker circle thing, we're going to cut off the tag and then take our two garlands. I got the pink one and the white one. I believe they also had a red one. And we're going to wrap this garland around our little circle. So you can just tuck in both of the edge, edges at the beginning and the end and they won't hang out. Since there's wire in this, it will be staying right where you put it. We are also going to be using this garland to hang our chandelier from and we want to be hanging it from three separate points so that it will be hanging evenly even with the weight distributed because if you're only hanging it from two points then if it's heavier on one side or the other it could be uneven. So to avoid that I'm using one longer piece and one shorter piece and connecting them on the circle on each third point. I used one longer piece and one shorter piece and then I connected all of them at the top by creating a loop and twisting the excess of all of them until it hung even. Now we are just going to take our colored paper and we're going to cut it into thirds. Then you're going to stack all three pieces and fold them hot dog style. Once you've done this, we're going to take our Sharpie and we're going to trace some half heart shapes from our folded edge and then we are going to cut them out. This is going to create three identical hearts all at once. So just go ahead and repeat this with all of your paper. Never work too hard while I give it all of me. I'm a classic, little internet, I don't panic. Always keep my cool while you're crashing. What you looking for? Once your hearts are all cut out and you want to take a piece of your garland and glue your hearts together triadically. You're going to take one heart and place glue on one side of the heart. And then you are going to glue the opposite side of another heart onto that one. So when you press those two pieces together, it's creating another little heart. You're going to use this to grab on to your piece of garland and then you can place glue on both sides of the new heart you've created and glue on your third heart. You're just going to continue this with various colors and sizes up your strand. I ended up creating three separate strands. I also added some of those little candy heart stickers to decorate our triadic hearts that we put on there and just glued on some little paper hearts onto our paper hearts as well. Now once you're done with your strands to attach them you are just going to tuck them up and in your wicker circle and then you can just bend down that little piece. And again, since there's wire in it, it can stay, but if you'd like it to be more secure, then you can twist the little end that you've had around your original strand to really lock it in place so that it'll last if somebody pulls on it. And once we have those all attached, we are going to take some fishing line and our wooden heart cutouts. I spray, it, spray painted mine a light pink. To do this, I just threw all of them into an Amazon box and then just painted in that box. That makes it so you're getting the entirety of all of them without wasting as much paint as you would if they weren't in a container. So I just spray painted both sides of them pink and we're going to take our fishing line and we're going to tie one of our hearts onto the bottom of our strand and we're going to tie the other one a few inches up from that. 
You crave all that attention. Where is everyone when it all ends? Then we're going to take some candy heart stickers and we're going to stick them on the string, some in doubles and some in triples. So for the triples, we're gonna do just like our paper hearts before, attaching them triadically. And for the doubles, you can just stick the two hearts together with your piece of fishing line in the center. I created three of these strands as well. And then we are just going to stick our fishing line up through our little wicker ring and double knot them in place. And once you've attached all three, you are done. Here is how mine turned out. I think it is just so stunning and fun. I think it's incredible that you can make a chandelier with such cheap materials. It doesn't have to be made out of diamonds to be beautiful and just a beautiful center to your room. I had a lot of fun making these crafts today. My favorite is a tie between this X and O sign because it's drawing all these other colors into my aesthetic and our chandelier which I think is just so fun and gorgeous. Make sure to comment down below what your favorite craft is and don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to. Thank you for watching this video all the way through and I hope you have a great day.